Hi guys, I'm really excited to welcome today two amazing people working on Champions Ascension lore. We have both uh, Kim and Ryan. Kim, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and what you're doing here at uh, Jam City. Hi, I'm Kim Hamilton. I'm the Studio Narrative Director at Jam City's Narrative Studio. Hi everyone, I'm Ryan Kaufman and I'm the VP of Narrative for all of Jam City. Um, and I've been working really closely on the lore uh, for Champions these, uh, these past few months. One of the things that I've been able to do is work with a lot of talented people like Kim, um, but also Johnny Casamassina and Jairo and uh, um, a lot of the creatives who have really inspired me, uh, both through the art and through the design. And those inspirations become stories. And as the stories get bigger and bigger, like this last season, uh, I, we brought in more talented people like Kim. like. I really enjoyed working with Kim on Harry Potter. She has a really wonderful sense of character and drama and how to make things super interesting and fun and funny. And she brought all that energy to her story in Champions. So um, maybe let's let Kim talk a little bit about what it was like to write for Champions. Sure, thanks Ryan. We've had the pleasure to work together on a lot of different projects. Uh, Harry Potter, Vineyard Valley, uh, Family Guy, Quest for Stuff is what brought me to Jam City uh, for my background in television. Uh, I worked for some soap operas, All My Children, and Guiding Light. And then I worked for uh, WWE Professional Wrestling. And I think that experience is a lot of what I've been able to bring to, to champions and this project uh, because there's, there's so much depth of character and then that cool Coliseum action that we're trying to build. Definitely one of my favorite characters to write for and write about is the Emperor. Um, and for those who might be new to the lore, the Emperor is, you know, the Emperor of all Messina. He runs the games, he has a whole political system at his disposal, and he's not necessarily the best guy, but he's also not a villain. He's kind of complicated. And on the other side, uh, there's Dr. Prometheus. And Dr. Prometheus works in sort of an underground alchemy lab where he's putting together strange experiments. And those two are quite a team. And they have kind of a crazy backstory and um, are connected in ways that I don't want to say right now because there's some spoilers involved. But those are two of the, my favorites. Um, I also loved writing for the heroes like Darius and June, who are more involved in the day to day of like what it's like to fight in the Coliseum and try to earn that glory that Champions is all about. Those are those are really great characters um, because they allow you to kind of pretend what it might be like to be your own, you know, champion and. Um, and have your own story in Messina. Um, so those, those have been really fun, but there's also a ton of side characters who are sort of sometimes in the shadows. And uh, Kim was able to take a few of those characters, the Bonesmith and the Osteomancer, who are kind of off there in the Ministry of Bone doing their thing. We don't know much about them. And Kim was able to take those characters and run with them in this latest season and offer us a whole relationship that never existed before. It was really cool. And I'm really glad that she was able to come on and do that. Yeah, I loved writing for those characters, Ryan. It was exciting because they're sisters. It was challenging because one of the sisters is blind and there's a whole backstory to that, that again, spoilers, we won't reveal. Um, but it, it was very exciting to delve into the relationships of these characters and the humanity of these characters because all the, all the players are coming in as maestros who are humans in this non-human world. So the more that we can make it relatable through how these characters interact with each other, what they love about each other, what they hate about each other, what they fight about, I think it makes it more real and more exciting to players who are, that's their entry point into the world. Yeah, absolutely. I really think um, there's a lot of connection to the Harry Potter world where there's a lot of magic and mystical, legendary things going on, but the people uh, who it's happening to or trying to do their best in that world are the most important thing. And uh, I really loved how your story brought that to the fore. And um, I hope we can still keep doing that with 
with champions. You know, it's more than just the world, it's the people in it and what they want and what they're trying to do and the fights they have and all that stuff makes for just great stories. Yeah, let me let me try to explain the uh, the story process. It, it's uh, it's not an easy thing to really summarize because it comes from all sorts of different places. Usually, it'll start with a conversation with the team, sometimes about an upcoming feature or like we're gonna drop the elementals in in the fall. So let's feature some stories, you know, about the ele elementals and and we did that in this last season. There'll be these other free-floating uh, story ideas that need a home. And like in this last season, really wanted to do something about the the city of hell that's, or the dimension of hell that's below Messina and who lives there and what goes on down there. And really wanted to feature the Bonesmith and the Osteomancer. And you look at your team and you think you know sometimes who should write what, uh, but it doesn't always turn out that way. And you really have to, kind of work as a team to figure out maybe who's the right fit for what story. Like, as I remember, Kim, you were slated to do the had the story about hell and you and Troy switch, right? We did, yeah. And oh yeah, I'm, I mean, I think you brought that up last time and I was like, oh yeah, that was like such a smart switch too because yeah, Troy just went deep on the lore there. Uh, yeah, he was giving me all sorts of ideas for the hell story. And it was so clear that it was in his wheelhouse that and he had such passion for it. And it would have taken me so much research at, at, to kind of get to a place that he could get to so naturally that it was just kind of like, hey, I would really love to do that sister story because that's kind of like my jam to yeah. deal with the sisters and the relationships. So yeah, I think that switch just kind of goes to show how writers, we, we often know ourselves and and can see like the strengths in others and be like, here, you, you take this one because you're just going to make it shine and I can't wait to read what you're going to do with it. I think this is my first time writing prose in this way, writing characters in a self-contained story where in game writing and even in screenwriting, we're writing dialogue either for, for live actors or to be read on, on a screen by a player as dialogue, as characters talking. So to build out the whole world and to write it in a way that helps players see something through a character's eyes, through prose, was really exciting and challenging and especially exciting with the bonesmith because she is blind so you're trying to get players to see the world through a character who cannot see and that was a, an especially unique challenge i told ryan I, I think i revised it so many times because we so naturally want to write through seeing something through a character's eyes and we're giving visuals to find different words and different ways to tell that story makes it really unique. And I think it's what also sets this project apart with Champions is that we're, we're accessing characters and stories in different ways than uh, people who play games or watch television might be used to. Yeah, I totally agree with Kim. Like writing for this type of game is new and different and fun and uses a lot of skills that I've never used before. For instance, uh, having a live community out there reading the lore, being involved in the lore, we've taken people from the Discord, put them in the stories, featured them as characters. We've done things like choose your own adventure online where they're driving where the story's gonna go. Um, there's an underground fight club happening and everyone's got their character and they're betting on it and uh, plans for season three are actually even more exciting that the community is going to create a champion, hopefully. Um, and that's something that, you know, Harry Potter lets you branch a story, uh, but this gives you the sense of the community is really driving things and you don't necessarily know where it's going to go next. And that's really exciting, too. Uh, I love having people not only reading the lore, talking about the lore, but actually pushing it in directions that I didn't anticipate. And that's super exciting and cool and very unique to Web3 and Champions. I think right now we've created a lot of really exciting relationships and rivalries in the lore 
And what we're moving towards next is creating them in the Coliseum and live action and getting players more involved in creating those rivalries. And I think that's when we're going to hit our sweet spot, when it's the players and the internal team together working to build these stories. And, and I think Ryan can speak more to that, too. Yeah, I mean, speaking since, since you mentioned rivalries, um, we're going to learn more about the house rivalries. And so that's going to become important, what house you belong to, and what's going on between them. And of course, the guilds are going to be a big part of it. And the guilds are all rivals and uh, competing for the top slot. So there's a lot to come. And in fact, there's there's always something going on on the Discord and you can find it in, you can find the lore in the lore archives. You can find uh, people discussing the lore and lore discussion channel and it comes up in the general too. We also have a thriving Twitter community, both on our main account. And then there are a few secret side accounts that people will follow that have fun little stories going on so those are important to watch and, and anyone can dip into those at any time so i encourage you all to check us out on discord and twitter there's always some kind of lore going on uh even between seasons which we are right now but season three is coming up so that's going to be a big deal in the fall <laughs>